Hello, I am pleased to announce a second pre-release of the Valley of the Kings map. Basically, it's just an update to the earlier pre-release that adds a couple features uh, that I really want to get tested before release, because uh, they are oriented towards making the game more playable with fewer players. So, I'm just gonna go over these. I added... Well, I just modified the help section a little bit, but the most important thing I added is the AI options. Essentially, what this does is it creates sort of... AIs is a strong word, but NPCs, you know, mobs, to guard the bases. And what that does is it allows for sort of more complexity when you're playing in a one versus one match because you don't just run to the flag run back it actually gives you something you have to do because they are not pushovers they are pretty tricky um, mobs to get past uh, also when you try to start the game now it will prompt you if needed to increase the AI count I'm gonna do five I'm feeling I'm feeling lucky so there's also a couple more minor changes I made um, I'll demonstrate those here. So previously, in pre-release 1, if you disconnected and reconnected, it would kick you from the game. But now... Now it just respawns you and kills you. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Elytra in and I'm gonna try to claim the enemy flag. Which reminds me, there's now, you can faintly see, there's a particle beam there. The flags and any flag carriers now emit a particle beam, making them a little more difficult to hide. Uh, this is very useful in lower player counts because then you can tell which path the enemy is taking back. If they've captured the flag, uh, you can sort of tell where they are. Stealth is still a very valuable option for things like um, you know, for things like going to the enemy base, but when it comes to capturing the flag, you pretty much just have to be, well, good at fighting, I guess. Anyway, uh, here we can see one of the NPCs. Oh. And the thing with these guys is, they have the same abilities as players, which is to say, their weapons are instant kill unless you're blocking with the shields. Also, they switch to swords at close range. Oh, as you can see, I just dieted. I don't know why, I just took the long way around. So they switch to swords at close range, and what they do is they are sort of designed as a replacement for players just guarding the base, uh, which means that in a 1v1 or 2v2 match, it's a legitimate option now to have both people trying to attack the enemy base instead of just leaving someone to do the boring job of just sitting at their base waiting for someone to come. Of course, in my opinion, a player is still a much better defense than uh, these NPCs, even if they are kind of tricky to get past sometimes. Uh, also, another thing to keep in mind, they respawn after 30 seconds. Essentially, there's five NPCs, one tied to each... Ah, screw it, I'm just gonna cheat. One tied to each location, and when you kill one, then in 30 seconds it will respawn in that location when there's a little uh, respawn animation, so if one respawns right behind you, then you can hear it and you can defend properly. Now, attacking each base with the five NPCs is a little different, but I tested it and it seemed pretty balanced. Oh, come on. And you'll see, um, even with the sword, I can survive if I shield properly. But uh, your weapons are instant kill on these guys. Gotcha just as they are on any player. Oh, ah, oh, darn it, I was hoping he wouldn't notice me. Anyway, I think I got my point across. So, I encourage you guys to experiment with this new version, see if you can, you know, find bugs in it, test the gameplay out, all of that sort of thing. Thanks, see ya.